10-year yields falling to their lowest levels in two weeks today and could be heading to a crucial juncture. So what is the next key level to watch? Let's bring in the chart master, Carter Worth of Worth Charting. Carter, what are you looking at? Yeah, all sorts of junctures. And uh, just as you all discussed, we're working into a tighter and tighter range with uh, something important directional coming. I think it's down, but let's look at the charts. The first, uh, the first two are yield charts, 10-year yields. The f this one is a logarithmic scale. Now, to be fair, one could say, well, you've just drawn the lines to fit your narrative. Here's the thing. You can connect any two points of the line, but the top line connects five points and the bottom line connects four. Those lines are not random, and we have broken below uh, the lower band. Look at the exact same chart, but in uh, arithmetic scale. We're still ever so slightly above uh, the upward sloping uh, line in effect since the COVID low. I think we go lower. Um, that's my view. I don't like financials, haven't liked them, and let's look at that. Just two more charts. They're both two panel charts. The next is the BKX index. That's the 24 largest banks in the United States, big ones you know, like JP Morgan, Citi, Wells. And that is that index on the top. On the bottom is the relative performance. So the bank's performance, even as they went higher for most of the year, it peaked seven months ago, uh, back in May. Now look at the second two panel chart, and this is going back five years. So just contend with that. Think of that. This index, the big eight index, is making new highs on the top. But on the bottom, it continues to, I mean, it's been underperforming for four or five years. And we're at what? Maybe going into a slowdown of some kind, or we're getting data that's a little soft? I don't know. Why own banks? Don't like them. All right. That was clear. Carter, thanks. We'll see you in a few minutes on Options Action. Um, Jeff Mills, do you own banks? And as Carter asks, why? Why bother? Yeah, I mean, we do have some exposure to banks. We're usually pretty diversified across sectors. But at the same time, I agree with what Carter's saying. And I don't know that I'm necessarily a major bank bull right now. I, I do think the yield curve is telling us something, right? And, it, and it's telling us more rate hikes sooner, less rate hikes further down the road, because the Fed isn't going to be able to hike because growth is going to be impacted. That's why you're seeing the curve flattening, not necessarily a good thing for banks. Plus, I think you have a positioning thing going on right now with the 10-year, for example. I think you have an unwind of some of these steepening trades that were put on. And the Fed is still buying a really large portion of the float in the 10-year. So longer rates are going to have to contend with that for a while. You know, specific to banks, they're obviously at a key juncture, most of them back down to that 200-day moving average. And then there's this tension I see between loan growth and the rate environment, because even if rates go up, if loan growth isn't healthy, then banks are still going to have a problem. I think loan growth actually looks OK, but if rate hike expectations stay where they are, I think the curve will have a flattening bias, you know, at least for the next couple of quarters. So not necessarily a bullish call for banks there. Yeah, it's pretty eye opening when you look at the uh, relative performance to the S&P 500 Grasso to think that banks, they made their peak seven months ago. Yeah, you know, when you look at it, when you think about a recovery, when, when we were talking about being in the throes of the pandemic, you thought economic activity was gonna be weak, you thought everything was gonna be weak, the consumer was gonna be weak, and we didn't really see that. And, and to uh, Carter's point, they did peak out pretty early, but when you look at them as a standalone basis, Year to date, they're up, you know, 30 percent or so, the XLF, that is. And J.P. Morgan is one of the top holdings. J.P. Morgan's chart still looks OK. XLF still looks OK. But I've been pretty steadfast in saying that the 10-year is mind-boggling to me. And I know there's other ways around it. and There's positioning around it. But for me, if we're talking about rising rates, all these rates should be skyrocketing through the roof. And I think we're going to be contending with lower rates sooner rather than later. They're stagnant now. The Fed will not be able to raise rates. I will stand pat on that. And this is going to be a negative headwind to a lot of different sectors, most significantly financials. We got a lot of bearishness when it comes to the outlook for the economy and, and the outlook for growth, Nadine. I mean, you're, you're nodding in agreement with Grosso in terms of the Fed not being able to raise rates because the economy is just not going to allow it. I mean, I think you have a short time frame now, like so maybe a couple of months where things are going to be OK. So I wouldn't go all on and totally short financials or the KRE. In fact, I'm looking at the KRE. It's 
got almost six to one upside for our trading ranges. A huge short interest. So people have already been on this play. This is not the time to be going short the KRE. And there's an interesting study I read recently about how, like, if you look at the local banks, try to find the people who are actually in areas that are growing. We're thinking, you know, Nashville, we're thinking Florida, um, they can actually outperform. So while we do believe you will see lower yields over time because you're, maybe you hike once, but you're not going to see a ton of hiking by the Fed. Um, what you don't want to do is say like, okay, I'm going to go full on short right now because still you're in this tight range as Carter showed and as we think. And so you could see rates pop up to 146 on the 10 year. That would be good for financials. So if you have them, maybe that's your sign to start taking some off. Financials are a very diverse sector, Guy Dami. Not all financials are so reliant on the yield curve. Are there others which you may like? Look at you. I, you're so in, Now you're trying to get in inside, my head, but I'm right? shaking totally you out of inside. it. No, no, no. Yeah. In, in, you entrenched. Were, but now you're, you're, I'm here you're not to stay. there anymore. Yeah, Where well, am I? perhaps. Okay. But I will tell you, and I know Blackstone, listen, Blackstone traded north of 140. It's pulled back in the 124 area, I think. You know, Blackstone to me, they're still doing everything right. You get down to 115, I think you buy it with both hands. I think you're right there. And I think Citibank quickly, it's 76% now of tangible book at current price of $59. I mean, that is flashing red to me in terms of just a trading from the long side opportunity.